The Second World War is undoubtedly the most notorious and widely analyzed and discussed war in the history of the world. Lasting from 1939 to 1945, World War II ended after involving nearly every nation on Earth and costing the lives of an estimated 74 million people. Most people know the major plot points of the war, the Allied and Axis powers, the eventual downfall of Adolf Hitler, and plenty more. What most people are unaware of, however, is the vital role that women played in the way that World War II played out. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Facts Fanatics. We are dedicated to bringing you the most shocking and downright unbelievable real-life incidents that stunned the world. Today, we are going to discuss an often overlooked theme of World War II, the undervalued role that women played, and just how vital they were in securing an Allied victory. World War II occurred during a time in history where the opportunities and rights of women were much less than they are today. While the average person in the 1940s would probably tell you that a woman's role in a major war, such as World War II, was to stay home and continue to simply raise the children and to keep the home in order, they would be severely downplaying just how crucial the role of the world's women were during the time. While the responsibility of continuing to raise children and work to upkeep the home was a chief priority for women who saw their husbands go overseas to war, there were plenty of other duties carried out by the world's women during the time, including military involvement and fulfilling traditionally male-driven work roles. Let's take a look at a few of the many women heroes of the Second World War. Jane Kende, a U.S. Navy flight nurse, entered her name into the history books on March 6, 1945, when she touched down on the Japanese island of Iwo Jima, making her the first U.S. Navy flight nurse to fly an evacuation mission into an active war territory. She was also the first woman to land on a Pacific battlefield, another impressive feat. She used her time in training as a flight nurse to also be instructed on other important duties, such as flight crash protocols, wartime survival, specific wound treatments for those being flown at high altitude. Kende and her other flight nurse companions would eventually successfully evacuate 2,000 U.S. military members out of Iwo Jima. They were also in charge of their medical care while en route back to the United States. Most impressively, out of the over 1 million U.S. military soldiers who were wounded and evacuated by plane during the course of the war, only 46 perished in the air. It was an extremely tough and highly stressful duty to carry out, and Kende was one of the best in her field, helping to ensure that the U.S.'s death counts were much lower than what could have been without the nurses' impeccable care. Nancy Harkness Love was another important aerial figure for the United States military during World War II. Love was the first female pilot to successfully enlist into the U.S. forces and was also the founding member and leader of the Women's Auxiliary Federation Squadron, or WAFs. She was inspired to fly from a young age and received her first pilot's license at the mere age of 16, an extremely rare feat for a woman of the time. After her admittance into the U.S. Air Force, Love lobbied for and successfully created the WAFs, an all-female piloted squadron that primarily ferried aircrafts and supplies from their factory of origin to various air bases. Love also took charge in the training of new WAFs members. After the conclusion of the war, Love received the Air Medal in recognition of her acts of heroism and achievement in the act of flight. Shortly after, in 1948, she was promoted to the role of Lieutenant Colonel of the U.S. Air Force Reserve. She continued her love of flying for the remainder of her life, regularly taking recreational flights as well as remaining a primary advocate for female veterans. In the case of Susan Ann Cuddy, her World War II military service was more than just in support of her country. It was personal. In 1937, Cuddy's father was killed by the Japanese army, while he was visiting Seoul, after he was caught publicly denouncing the Japanese occupation of South Korea. Just three short years later, her temper was inflamed again after Japan's bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941. Angered and determined, Cuddy and both of her brothers decided to enlist in the military to join in the Allied fight against the Axis powers, including Japan. While her brothers had a slightly easier path, Cuddy found her initial military journey difficult. Not only was she a woman, she was also an Asian American, a demographic that faced severe and cruel discrimination in America in the wake of the Pearl Harbor attacks. Nevertheless, Cuddy applied to the Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service program to join the U.S. military upon her graduation from college 
but was rejected. Determined now more than ever, Cuddy applied again shortly after and was accepted, making history by becoming the US Navy's first Asian American woman member. She went on to become a link trainer, responsible for the training of airmen in combat tactics. Later on, she made history again by becoming the first female gunnery officer in the Navy and taught airmen the proper technique of firing 50 caliber rifles. Upon her retirement from service, Cuddy continued to serve to America by working with the U.S. Navy Intelligence Office, the Library of Congress, and even the NSA. A final feat still awaited Cuddy, as she lived to be 100 years old, passing away in 2015. May Cryo is just a small-town North Dakota woman, a product of the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression. She never dreamed of the road her life would take, nor the contributions she would make during the course of World War II. After the men of her family, her father and brother left town to serve in the military after the attacks on Pearl Harbor, Cryer moved to Seattle, where she met and fell in love with a Navy sailor. The two married, and her husband was shortly after shipped off to the front lines. Once he left, Cryer decided to help in any way she could, signing up to become a Rosie, like Rosie the Riveter, a group of women who worked in various warehouses and shipyards during World War II to produce crucial wartime assets such as ammunition and planes. Cryer specifically worked in a warehouse to produce the Boeing B-17 and B-29 bomber planes over the course of a nearly two-year service into the Rosies. These labors, traditionally completed by a strictly male workforce, were extremely grueling and ran the risk of serious injury, and Cryer was responsible for operating a complicated heavy machinery for long work days. The Rosies' value to the United States' efforts in World War II cannot be understated. Having women step into the careers of men to allow them to ship off and fight overseas was a huge bonus to the Allied powers and truly drove the outcome of the war. After her service and still to this day, Cryer has continued to serve the Rosies as an advocate for the group, having spoken to Congress as well as around the country in regards to the group's importance and fighting for the official recognition of Rosies by way of receiving the Congressional Gold Medal. Colonel Ruby Bradley, a member of the United States Army Nurse Corps, is one of the most highly decorated women in the history of the U.S. military. Working at a hospital in the Philippines in 1941, Bradley was imprisoned by the Japanese military in the wake of the attacks on Pearl Harbor and placed in a prisoner of war camp. While imprisoned, she worked by providing critical medical assistance to her fellow prisoners and often gave up her rations of food to those who were worse off than she was. This led to Bradley losing an alarming amount of weight, and a newfound extra room in her clothes allowed her to successfully smuggle vital medical supplies into camp while avoiding suspicion. During her time as a prisoner of war, she incredibly performed over 200 successful surgeries and even helped deliver 13 babies. Once the camp was freed in 1945, Bradley had shrunk to a shocking 84 pounds in light of her giving up most of her food rations to the sick and her young children. She earned the nickname an angel in fatigues, along with her fellow nurses, for their incredibly selfless service to those around them. In the years after the war, Bradley continued to humbly serve her country in the U.S. Army. She also served during the Korean War, during which she was promoted to the rank of colonel. Upon her retirement in 1963, Bradley had achieved 34 different awards, medals, and decorations, including the coveted Bronze Star. While often overlooked in the history telling of World War II, there is no denying that the Allied victory was made possible by the selfless duty of millions of women. From seamlessly taking up the jobs formerly belonging to their husbands who were shipped overseas to fight, to meaningful active military service, women left a huge impression on the world and future fellow women in their service to the world during the war. Whether they were building planes or flying them, or providing critical medical service to the nation's wounded, the women of World War II were undoubtedly a crucial component of the trajectory and outcome of the deadliest war in modern history. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please help us to continue providing similar stories by liking and subscribing to our channel. Until next time.